watch and play replay with async on this video i wanted to give a brief history of the teenage mutant ninja turtles and how they began began and where they're going and leading up to the new movie that's coming out directed by seth rogan so let's begin the show hi guys thanks for watching i just wanted to ask you to please hit that subscribe button and like it and share it if you enjoy what I'm doing here. It helps out my channel greatly. And you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm also on Rumble. So if you're looking for me, you can also find that information in the descriptions of most of my videos on YouTube. So thank you for watching. So it all begins with the comics in 1983. That's when they created the characters and kind of came up with all this stuff. And by 1984, it was released as a comic book. It was a black and white comic, I believe. Anyway, and the creators are Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. And that's the two guys that created the Ninja Turtles. So from there, we go to the original cartoon series. And that came out in 1987 and lasted until 1996. And that was a good show because I was in high school. I, it wasn't really directed at my age group, but my sister was coming home from school every day and I just kind of happened to be there just kind of while well, I was coming home too. But I would end up watching this cartoon because it was on every single day when I got home from school. And I ended up falling in love with it because the Ninja Turtles were just, it's like the last um, catchy franchise uh, though it had toys and all that stuff of that era, it seems like. So it was really cool and it was, it was it's a mixture of funny and action and everything. It's, it's just a great little mix of everything. So that's where that went after, anyway, that, that show just lasted, seems like forever. I just remember that show being on for like the ba in the background, it was always on. It was a very good show though. And I'm sure everyone fell in love with it. That's why there's so many Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans at this point. So then we move on to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original movie. And that was a live action movie with real actors and suits and everything. So the first one for me, I enjoyed the first one. I went to see it in the theater and it was cool. I kind of didn't like it though because they didn't have like, like a uh, Krang and all that stuff. They didn't have mute, like the they didn't have the like the mutants that I wanted, like Rocksteady and Bebop and all that. But it was the Ninja Turtles and it was Shredder and all that stuff. So we got the basics, you know. I mean, you got to see how they came about. And they kind of told that story wrong too in that movie. But it seems like in the movies they can't seem to tell the story about how like, like the Ninja Turtles came to be like properly. I mean, like Splinter, you know, and not you know being a man who actually dealt with uh shredder at one point in their own country and it's just i don't know why they can't do that properly for some reason they just can't but whatever so moving on teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 uh the secret of the ooze and that came out in 1991 now i don't know if i got these i got these numbers for the dates offline I'm not sure if 1991 is right. It could be right, but it seems awfully quick to have a movie, a sequel to another movie come out that quick, right after the first one. I don't know. Maybe they were working on it like through the process of the first one. I don't know. It just seems weird that it came out in 1991. So you'll have to fact check that because I'm not sure if I'm right when, it's, when I say 1991, but that's what it says on the internet. So forgive me if I got it wrong. So yeah, that movie, I did not like that movie. That The second one was just not, it had two mutants that didn't I didn't care for. Um, Shredder becoming Super Shredder, I didn't really care for. It, there was just so many things like uh, Vanilla Ice, the, the song in that, I thought that was just as corny as possible. You could, I mean, you shouldn't have like uh, pop music and like, music of the time in movies as far as i'm concerned it should be like star wars what has a theme like music like orchestra music and stuff like that that just kind of 
can be ever like can be timeless you know in order to make the movie have a timeless feel because if you play that movie nowadays it looks dumb just because of the music it could it, it dates itself so i say you try not to do that and i know guardians of the galaxy does that but they do that with a, like a mixture of music from all different times so it kind of doesn't feel as dated i think but the ninja turtles they definitely had an issue with going getting as many great musicians at the time and trying to put them into a movie and it just kind of dated it so yeah i didn't really care for that movie though it wasn't the greatest it was better than the master of the universe movie though i mean both of the movies were better than that at this point so at least that's my point of view so if you don't like it i'm sorry but that's the way i feel anyway the next video or the next movie <laughs> is teenage mutant Ninja Turtles 3 and that came out in 1993 and i did not like that one at all even less than the other two or less than the second one um that one just they went through time they went back in time and they became like samurais or whatever it i did just didn't like it i just did not like it because they went further away from what i really wanted i wanted to have krang i wanted to have rocksteady and bebop i wanted shredder all these things to be like like the cartoon and they went further away from it and i think it's probably because of budget reasons i don't know but so that one for me was a flop and uh for probably a lot of people it might have been a flop i don't know but that's just how i feel about it so moving on from the 1993 turtles teenage mutant Ninja turtles 3 movie then we had teenage mutant Ninja turtles cartoons like a cartoon series it was just ninja turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I didn't really watch this so I don't know a lot about it what I did see it seemed different to me it wasn't the same it felt like it was moving away from the original stuff that we seen in the original cartoon I don't know maybe it was sticking to comic books more I don't know I just didn't watch it I don't know but um yeah and that went on for uh from 2003 to 2010 that's a pretty long cartoon so yeah that went on i remember seeing bits and pieces of it from here from time here and there you know and it just seemed like it was on forever i don't know i just didn't pay attention to it at the time and they had video games too along in these periods but i'm not going to talk about the video games right now i'm going to save that till to the end okay i don't want to get into video games and all the other aspects of the ninja turtles quite yet i just want to talk about the shows and the the movies right now so then moving on from the, the 2003 ninja turtles cartoon then we go to the tmnt cgi animated uh, movie and that was in 2007 so there was t definitely some gaps in between this time period where the turtles were not really doing much wasn't very in use the franchise was just kind of dead for a while there other than shows and a little here and there anyway so the 2007 movie i kind of liked it it looked cool i thought um i don't know it just it once again i just kind of wanted to see um shredder rocksteady bebop uh krang and all them that's my favorite version of the turtles so that's just that's just my thing so that's that's it's an all right movie it looks cool it has some kind of good character building and stuff like that but once again it didn't seem like it did very well and that it just passed on and just that's the way it was so then we get teenage mutant ninja turtles nickelodeon series and that's in 20 that's that series started in 2012 and went to 2017 now that show was my I almost want to say that is my favorite version of Ninja Turtles. Almost more than the original cartoon. That show I actually had a lot of laughs watching. It was it was made I just loved how it was animated. It just looked cool. It felt like you're watching a comic book and you're also watching a CGI, you know, a Pixar film almost. The way it was done was so cool. The music, everything was cool. And then all the different Krangs, you know, and then the way they talked. <laughs> and they were just kind of like a bunch of drone, like, Krang, like, 
hive minded robots or whatever and then they had krang the main krang it's just it's just cool and then they had lots of mutants in that show everyone was becoming a mutant it was just all over the place but um they did have some cool story elements into it in that and i did see that this that you can buy the the whole series for that now for like 30 bucks at like best buy and i think i've seen it on amazon but it's only on dvd it's not on blu-ray that show would look so good in blue on Blu-ray. I don't know why they're just doing DVD. But I don't know. Maybe it's out there on Blu-ray. I don't know. But I searched and I didn't find it. So, but that's like one of my favorite Ninja Turtles shows. I just love that show. This The way they did it, all the characters, all the the character development, a lot of stuff. They even had Rock, Rocksteady and Bebop in there eventually. Um, and they like they did have Krang. They, just, they definitely had Krang in that show. And they had Shredder and all that stuff. It, they, it was cool. It just, it was a really cool show. So then moving on uh, to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the live action movie in 2014. Um, and I always, I always want to say this to people because it drives me nuts. Because when I went to see this movie in the theater, I heard some kid going into, before he went into the theater, he was taking his dad or somebody to go see this movie. And I was like coming behind him with friends. And I heard this guy saying, yeah, it's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie done by Michael Bay. And he was like mad that it was done by Michael Bay or something. And I'm like, well, why are you going to see this movie for one? And then he says that. But here's the thing. The first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie was directed by Jonathan Liebesman or whatever. I'm messing his name up. Labisman. La anyway, Labisman. If I say it fast, maybe it'll sound better. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that's who directed it. That's not Michael Bay. That's another guy. Now, there were like six there were like six producers, not just Michael Bay. But Michael Bay was one of the producers, just one of them. So it's not like it was just Michael Bay on this and Michael Bay was the helm of it or something. No. So that's just the issue I had with people. They always want to... I, I know that a lot of people didn't like the, the the Transformers movies, the Michael Bay stuff, and I didn't really care for that either. But you shouldn't label a movie a Michael Bay movie when it's not Michael Bay directing it. Give the director some credit, for God's sake. I don't know if he was designing these things. I don't know. But I just know that he definitely had to check, sign the sign off on all the designs and all the stuff for the movie, I imagine, because he's a director. But I don't think he was the big bad guy that Michael Bay is when it comes to this stuff. Maybe Michael Bay had an idea to get this stuff going, you know, I don't know. But it wasn't Michael Bay directing these movies. So, I don't know. People need to pay attention to who's directing these things before they say the Michael Bay version of Ninja Turtles. I don't know. And there was some things I didn't like about the movies. Yeah, the Ninja Turtles were awfully big. I think they should have been teenage size, you know, and uh, April O'Neil being played by Megan Fox. That's mm, it's okay, I guess. I kind of wanted Megan Fox to at least have red hair like April O'Neil and maybe the yellow something to clothing, you know. Just because that's kind of the cartoon version and everyone knows her by that. So, whatever. But it's what it is. At least at least she was old enough to be um, in, you know, like a, a reporter, you know. So, but anyway. So, moving on. Then we go to the T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows 20, 2016 film. And that one is not directed by Michael Bay again. That one's directed by David Green, not Michael Bay. And I checked that one, and there was like six or so uh, producers on that one too, not just Michael Bay. So, once again, you can't completely blame Michael Bay for this movie. I understand he has a lot of pains, and everyone ha hates the guy from the stuff he did in Transformers because it made it kind of dumb. Transformers' heads are constantly rolling off like a goofball thing to do, you know. But... It wasn't just Michael Bay's fault for this film. And now this, the second uh, Ninja Turtles movie, this one here, Out of the Shadows, 
is the one where I kind of have more problems with uh, their ideas for the movie because Casey Jones uh, just wasn't Casey Jones in the movie. He just he wasn't the Casey Jones that we all knew from the first Ninja Turtles movie even. Um, and April O'Neil once again was being, you know, Megan Fox playing April O'Neil, but whatever. Um, the Ninja Turtles were funny. They did all of the stuff that you expect the Ninja Turtles to do. And that's really the saving grace on all of these movies is because you, you actually laugh at the Ninja Turtles and they do the things that Ninja Turtles do. And, you know, and Splinter and everybody seems like their characters. Now, the Ninja Turtles, are, like I said before, are a little big. And once again, I forgot to mention in the first movie of this, in the, um, the first 2006-14 uh, Ninja Turtles movie, I also forgot to mention that they didn't get the um, the Ninja Turtles um, beginning right again on how they became the Ninja Turtles and all that. They did it all weird again. And, you know, Splinter and all that. Splinter was a rat. And then, you know, the Ninja Turtles just kind of learned from a book. I, oh, oh, my God. I can't stand that. That is so dumb. But anyway, I, I, they just didn't, they didn't do anything with Splinter when he was a human knowing Shredder and that all, all that stuff. That would have been a great part of the movie, but no, they couldn't do that. I don't know. They, so anyway, and then they also kind of, Rocksteady and Bebop were kind of a little weird with some how they became who they were. But um, Krang, I thought he was kind of cool in that movie. And... They actually gave him his suit where he's in, like, the belly of that man type of robot and stuff. But there wasn't enough Krang for me in that movie. I think they should have had more Krang. And, and they should have had, like, Krang's, like, minions. They should have had more Foot Clan and had, like, robot Foot Clan and stuff. They should have had a lot of stuff, but they didn't do it. And now those movies have sailed on, sailed on and they didn't make enough money or something. And then... That's the way it went. I mean, they had Baxter Stockman in that movie, and I thought he did all right. I mean, he's even he was even made, he played black black guy. I know he wasn't. I think it was a black guy in the in the um, 2012 show, which it doesn't bother me. I don't care that they changed him, but later on, there's going to be a problem I have with one of the characters when they changed races and some other stuff for that matter. But it not it's not because I'm racist. It's because they just didn't do good for the character. I think. But anyway, so moving on from the 2014 and the 2016 Ninja Turtle movies, and we move on to Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon series. And that was out in 2018, it came out. I think it had like two seasons, because I just kind of laughed at it, because I thought that was the dumbest version of Ninja Turtles you could ever do. It looked so bad. The animation, just the way they drew them, everything was just, oh, for... For a regional fan of the Ninja Turtles, that was just like, like, like nails on a chalkboard. So I didn't watch it because I don't watch things that I don't like. So I didn't care for it. I don't know. They and then April O'Neil was a black girl in that one, which whatever, I guess. But um, I don't know. It seems weird when you put a black girl in the role of a character that it's a like a. A girl with red hair. It seems to be happening a lot in Hollywood lately. Uh, the Little Mermaid, they have to have a black girl instead of, you know, a girl with red hair, a white girl with red hair. It seems like they're replacing white girls with red hair in these movies with black girls for some reason. And black girls, you know, they could they could find a, a pretty girl that looks nice or whatever that fits the part, but she's going to still have to dye her hair to be red. It's not a natural thing. But like the Little Mermaid, her hair would be naturally red because she's a red head, you know, a white haired, a white girl with red hair. But they have to go all this way because tokenism is a thing and they have to make sure that they get one black person in a role that once was a white person's role. So then you get hand-me-down roles where, you know, you get where you where you get a main white character. But we have to turn that main white character into a black person now because of the hand-me-down. Here you go. Here's here, you can play April O'Neil now because you're uh, a black woman, you know? Well, okay. Baxter Stockman, though, that kind of fit, it kind of fit with him because I think he'd actually been a black guy before. Maybe he was, I, no, he was a black guy in the comics, too. So I guess that does work for him. But to change characters just because you can't make new characters. How about this? 
Can we create new characters that are black? Can we do that? Hollywood, do you have any creativity left? Can you please figure out a way to make a new black character or any other race for that matter, Asian, whatever, and make them a cool character that everyone looks up to so that you don't have to replace main characters that are not that race or that gender with that character color or race or whatever, or sex or whatever. It's just ridiculous when Hollywood does this. And we know why we're doing, they're doing it. They're just doing it for clout, just to say, look, see, we care about, we're not racist at all. We care about these people and it comes off as tokenism. So anyway, moving on. <laughs> so the last one here is, now I'm going to get into that, is um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. And that's a 2023 movie. And that has Seth Rogen as the director, which I'm not a big fan of Seth Rogen. Yeah, I can't even imagine how this is going to go. Um, it might be good. Who knows? But it, the cartoon, it kind of looks like uh, the Spy Into the Spider-Verse or whatever. That It, it kind of, the way they're drawing everything. Or the way they're making everything look. And the animation and all that. But um, it has a bunch of stars in the movie. I think Jackie Chan is playing like a Splinter or something. But anyway, even Seth Rogen plays, I don't know, Rock Steady or Bebop. Or I don't know which one. But it doesn't matter. Because I'm probably not going to like it. Because once again, they have to do the, um, they have to do the, um, they have to do the thing where they have to switch the race. April O'Neil is a fat black girl now. I'm sorry if it offends you without saying fat, but I'm sorry. But April O'Neil is supposed to be a reporter and she's also in, from all the other incarnations of her, she ends up training like, like the turtles to be like a ninja type of character. So if she's going to be overweight, it's going to be hard for her to keep up with the turtles when they're running super fast on top of um, top of buildings and doing all these jumps and all these kicks when she's um, just out of breath. I'll put it that way. Um, and I'm sorry if that offends somebody, but you know, um, the reason why these action heroes are actually doing action is because of they're actually moving fast and it's hard to move fast when you're overweight i'm sorry but that's true that's reality so i don't know why they decided to make april o'neill into a fat black girl and then a lot of i've seen people online saying well she's been black before yeah she was black before like just not long ago in the um the rise of the teenage mutant ninja turtles cartoon not long ago, they made her black. And by the way, that version of her was thin because she could keep up with them. But now the, now you make her a fat girl and you it just she doesn't even have red hair. She doesn't even, even wear the yellow or anything really. It's just like, why are you doing this? Because you're checking boxes, that's why. You're, oh, we got, there it is. We check the box. We got the black girl now. Oh yeah, by the way, um, is Baxter Stockman in this movie? Is he black? Oh, you already have a black character. So let's have two of them now. Let's just, why don't we just make all the turtles black too? Oh wait, they're not, they're turtles. How are you going to show that? I mean, it's just ridiculous. And then the designs for some of these things, like uh, like uh, Splinter, what's going on with his hair? It looks ridiculous. It just looks dumb. So I just, they got so many things going on. I can't, I can't imagine what like, uh, what Casey Jones is going to look, what he's going to be like, what his character, is he going to be a gay guy too? I don't know. We just, they check boxes, so you never know what they're going to do. Because we know that this is a kid's movie, so you know they're going to have to try to put some kind of a, a LGBT moment in there. Because, you know, we have to teach the kids at a young age. That's called grooming, but okay. We have to make sure we teach them about that. Because we have to make sure that they're chopping off their genitals at a certain age. Because, you know, they, they're too young to drink alcohol, too young to smoke. They're too young to vote. They're too young to do all these things. But you can take them, you can, they definitely know what they are when it comes to sex. They know how to, they, they, they can have a sex change at that, at that that age, right? Right? Makes perfect sense, right? It's just sickening. So whatever. Call me racist, whatever you want to call me. But you know what? That's the truth. That's the, that's the facts. You have to keep doing these box check, box checking things and it's they, they call this progression this is actually not pro progress this is moving our society backward 
Make new characters for black people to play that people can look up to. Make new characters. Create new characters. All you have to do is write stuff and you have to create a new character that people will look up to. There's kids out there that will look up to these kids, these characters. You don't have to put April O'Neil as a black character. You can make a strong black woman in there at any other place. You could have lots of them. You could do whatever you want, but you can't for some reason. You can only take characters that have already been made because they're more popular and give hand it down to a black person, which is kind of offensive as far as I'm concerned. That is really offensive. So I don't know why you would want to do that. But you know, it, it doesn't work too, the other way either though. You can't have Black Panther being played by a white guy, can you? You see how that works? It's hypocritical. It's just, it's bull. You can't do it that way. So anyway, I don't want to go on for too much longer. This video is already kind of long. So moving on to the last little thing. Um, I'm sure I've set off a bunch of people already, but that's okay. I mean, you don't have to watch. Remember that? I said, I don't watch things that I don't like to watch. So you don't have to watch what I'm doing. So move on to the next thing. And this is the last little thing I want to talk about. And that is video games. Um, video games that I have liked that are Ninja Turtles based or whatever. Uh, and there's a couple of them I haven't really played, but I've seen video of and I want to try them out. So bear with me here. The Ninja Turtles, the Kawabunga Collection. I haven't tried that yet. I imagine that's the older games in which I probably played some of those growing up. And then the next one is Shredder's Revenge. I am still playing that right now as I speak. I, on and off whenever I can. That's a cool game. It's basically like a side scroller. It's almost like the 80s games just updated for today's systems and stuff. And then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Mutants in Manhattan. That's a game that I played very little of and then it went off of Xbox for some reason they don't have it on like on um you can't you can't play it on there you can't buy it on Xbox on the in the, in the store or anything I don't know what happened to it and then it went away and now you can't find the disc even in a freaking GameStop which is ridiculous you can't even just buy the physical copy uh so I don't know what what happened to that that just disappeared and then I looked it up on Amazon and it's like 50 something dollars or $57 or whatever for this game. So I guess it's a, it's a rarity now. I guess it's um, a collectible. I don't understand. So, but it's a cool game and I would say get it if you can. Um, and the last one is one that, well, it's probably not one you can play because it's PlayStation 2 and Xbox and it's all the old systems. It's from quite a while back. But it was basically based on the um, the 2000, the 2003 cartoon, 2003 to through 2010 cartoon, and that those video games I had it on GameCube, the first one, and I thought it was a cool game. It was looks cart like a cartoon. It, it's cool, but yeah, those are the four games that I can say that are pretty cool and they're worth buying. I'm sure there's probably better. I, oh, I mean the classic Super Nintendo ones or the regular Nintendo ones, obviously. But those are the ones that I would say that I would play now that I could talk about. But that's pretty much everything. I didn't want to go on and on and on. So I figured I'd just let you know what games at the end of this because it kind of fits in with all the Ninja Turtle stuff. But that pretty much sums up my whole breakdown of the Ninja Turtles and the new Ninja Turtles movie and what I thought about all that stuff. So tell me what you think in the comments below because it's always interesting to hear too. Well, that's pretty much it. Like, share, and subscribe, and thank you for watching.